I'm sure you've heard of Kosovo. In the 1990s, you couldn't escape the news of the terrible conflict that was going on there. But did you know that the problem of Kosovo has not yet been resolved? Exactly 10 years ago, provisional authorities of Kosovo unilaterally declared their independence from the rest of Serbia. The decision of the parliament in Pristina, by which the secession of a part of Serbia was declared, was made without a referendum that would consult the citizens of Serbia, or at least the residents of the province of Kosovo. The secession was committed contrary to the will of the Serbian people, in direct violation of the constitution of Serbia and contrary to the legally binding UN Security Council Resolution 1244 on Kosovo and Metohija. It was done in peacetime, almost a full decade after the war, and when Serbia, Kosovo included, was a well-established member of the international community, a member of the UN and the Council of Europe, and in its talks with the EU on the accession process into the organization. At the time, Kosovo had secessionist leadership and is still led by commanders of the former so-called Kosovo Liberation Army, an organization that was for a while listed as a terrorist group by the US State Department and subject to numerous international investigations for war crimes and mass human rights violations during and after the conflict. Although falsely advocated as a human rights project, the so-called independence of Kosovo was merely a cynical geopolitical game of the mighty and powerful. So let's see where Kosovo is now. Kosovo is not a member of the United Nations, nor the Council of Europe or any other major international organization, and more than three quarters of humanity live in countries that, despite serious and continuous pressure, haven't recognized this unilateral and illegal secession. Serbian refugees that were supposed to return after the end of the conflict have not returned, and 247,000 remain displaced to this very day. The provincial capital of Pristina, once home to a sprawling population of more than 50,000 Christian Serbs, is now the capital of the so-called Republic of Kosovo, with 37 elderly people being the only Serb residents left. Even Serbian graveyards, in what was recently declared the officially most polluted capital in the world, have repeatedly been desecrated and destroyed. Although the ordinary people in Kosovo, now the Albanian majority, were not at all consulted on the issue of the status, they were for years led to believe that should Kosovo secede from Serbia, it would prosper and benefit, both economically and politically. On the 10th anniversary of the unilateral declaration of independence, it is fair to say that their expectations turned out to be a complete and total letdown. With an unemployment rate of 62%, by far the highest in Europe, and with 140,000 people, or more than 10% of the population, leaving the territory for Western Europe in less than two years, the only ones that seem to have benefited from the conflict, both politically and financially, are the very few members of the so-called elite, former KLA commanders, and some of the politicians coming from countries that supported the self-declared independence with private business interests vested in the region. This is the real truth about Kosovo. And the world does need to hear about it. On the 10th anniversary of the unilaterally proclaimed independence of Kosovo, we are actually marking 10 years since the destruction of the international law system and the principle of state sovereignty. The past decade has been a decade of encouragement for separatist movements that have begun to awaken around the world and will continue to do so, invoking the case of self-proclaimed Kosovo. What the sponsors of the Kosovo independence have called a unique case actually became an inspiration to many who believe that by engaging in unilateral acts or violence, they can create new pseudo-state entities on the territories of sovereign states. Kosovo and Metohija is historically a part of Serbia, a region blessed by nature and diverse and dignified people, 
Albanians, Serbs, Gorani, Muslims, Roma, and many others in the heart of Europe. However, centuries of foreign rule have left the region largely cleansed of its original inhabitants, the Serbs, while the Albanian population soared. The 20th century was marked by conflicts between Albanians and Serbs. When in the 1990s some Kosovo Albanians formed an armed rebel movement, the so-called KLA, it wasn't a fight for a noble cause. They started attacking Serbian civilians and police, and even Albanians who refused to join them. They even had links to Osama bin Laden. The Serbian army and police started fighting against the terrorists. But much of the Western world decided to back the KLA, an illegal 78-day bombing campaign against Serbia ensued and NATO took over control of the province. UN Security Council Resolution 1244 guaranteed that Kosovo was to remain a part of Serbia. But on February 17, 2008, the Kosovo Albanian leadership declared independence. This was quickly recognized by a lot of countries, but many also refused to recognize Kosovo as independent. Those who recognized Kosovo were in violation of the UN Security Council resolution that I mentioned. Mind you, this resolution is legally binding, but these were powerful countries and Serbia, a small country, couldn't do much to stop them. Those who believe that the unilateral secession of the political oligarchy in Pristina means the end of history on the Balkans, know nothing about history or the Balkans. Flags and political systems have changed more than 10 times in Pristina during the past century. None of this has brought a solution for the underlying issues. Serbia is ready to face the problem in a mature and responsible manner. But Serbia will never recognize the existence of another state on its own territory by any irrevocable act. The conflicts between the two largest nations in the Western Balkans cannot be solved by supporting one side's unreasonable demands at the expense of the other. In order for the solution to be sustainable, it must take into account the interests of both nations. At the end, what are the results of this so-called state-building secessionist project in Kosovo? Close to a quarter million Serbian refugees, endangered Serbian Christian churches and monasteries, the boom of Islamic religious extremism, highest unemployment rate in Europe, chronic political instability, blossoming of crime and lawlessness. On the 10th anniversary of the unilaterally declared independence of Kosovo, it would be a responsible and honest thing to say that the secessionist project in the Serbian province of Kosovo and Metohija, conceived in this way, has failed, and that it is necessary to seek a new form of solution in order to establish lasting peace and stability in this part of Europe.